changing the gear oil in the vacuum blower. To change the oil in the vacuum blower, we first need to drain the old gear oil out of the blower just into any type of short cup or receptacle. We will do that by taking out the bottom drain plug and allowing the oil to drain. Put that drain plug back in and then we will go to the front of the base unit. There will be two black plastic caps that when taken out of the front plate of the base unit will allow us to then access the fill plug and the oil level check plug. The bottom plug is your oil level check plug. The top plug is your fill plug. The blowers will take approximately six to eight ounces of the gear lube. We remove both plugs, the oil level plug and also the fill plug. We will then insert through just a small oil can new gear lube, again six to eight ounces into the fill plug we will continue dispensing into that opening until we get a very small oozing of oil out of the oil level check plug. At that point, the oil level is sufficient. Reinsert your plugs. Hand tight is all we need to do. We do not need any Teflon tape or Teflon pipe dope, anything like that for these plugs. Changing the bearing oil in the vacuum blower to summarize. We will change this oil every six months or 500 hours of operation, whichever comes first. When filling, go slowly and remember to stop as soon as you see signs of the oil leaking from the bottom fill plug. The oil that we use is the vacuum gear lube available from Bain Clean Corporation. Changing the grease in the vacuum blower. You will have two Zerk grease fittings on the drive side of the vacuum blower, the drive side being the side with the shaft. Each bearing will have its own Zerk fitting. We will just use a medium bearing grease or really just a standard automotive grease. You can use just a normal household grease gun. You will insert the bearing grease until it starts to come out through two small overflow vents. You cannot overfill. So you will continue to pump grease into these fittings until you see the excess oozing out. To summarize, changing the grease in the vacuum blower, we do it also every six months or every 500 hours of operation, whichever comes first. Always use a number two or medium bearing grease for this procedure. The back flush operation. It is very critical in maintaining good airflow through our vacuum system and our vacuum blower to keep the inside of the vacuum pump, specifically the impellers, clean. We will want to cleanse the interior of this vacuum pump every week of operation. What we are going to do is let 
a very small trickle of water run down through our vacuum blower with the machine running. To do that, we disconnect the exhaust hose coming from the vacuum blower to the muffler. We then put a back flush extension hose onto it. We take the two wing nuts holding the clean out door on top of the base unit off and remove the ta tank access door. That access door also has a small deca decal on it that also will give you instructions regarding flushing the vacuum system. Down inside this opening, we have a two inch standpipe with a filter. Remove that filter prior to back flushing. This filter should be cleaned weekly or if you go portable with your base unit every day. We now will turn on a garden hose and just let a small trickle of water come out of that garden hose. The machine has been turned on and we now are running a very small volume of water down through that standpipe which is located inside and a little back away from the opening on the clean out door. What we are doing is now running this clean water down through the vacuum blower and it is cleansing the impellers and the internal area inside that vacuum blower which may have accumulated uh, some soap, some hair, some carpet fibers. We will do that for 10 minutes. We will then turn the water off and allow the machine to run another 10 minutes. After that, we will put in Bane Clean Vacuum Lube. We will use just a couple of squirts or possibly a couple of ounces. Let the machine run another five minutes. Then we have accomplished the back flushing procedure. We will put our filter back on the standpipe, put our clean out access door on top, and then tighten down the wing nuts. Again, this should be done weekly regardless of machine hours. We then reconnect the exhaust hose going up to the Bane Clean silencer, put our louver door back on the portable, and we have accomplished this procedure. Start to finish this procedure should take approximately 20 to 25 minutes. flushing the aqua mount and perma mounts. Here we utilize the same vacuum blower but it is positioned differently on the machine. This vacuum system is located on top of the clean water tank on either the 70 gallon tank or the 120 gallon tank or if you have one of the dual mount systems it will also have one of these aqua mounts. It is equally important to back flush that as well. Daily maintenance procedures. Back flush vacuum system and add vacuum lube if dirty water is ever allowed to overflow and run down through that vacuum standpipe in the 20 gallon recovery tank weekly maintenance procedures. Back flush vacuum system and add vacuum loop. Check with the assistance of the vacuum gauge the vacuum efficiency of the machine. Check and clean all filters, screens, and inline filter. Inspect all hoses and couplers for wear. Check pressure gauge to ensure proper PSI. If belt driven system, check belt tensions. Make sure spare parts inventory is adequate. Semi annual maintenance procedures. 
conduct weekly maintenance procedures. Drain and replenish the oil and grease in the vacuum pump. Annual maintenance procedures. Conduct weekly maintenance procedures. Drain and replenish the oil and grease in the vacuum pump. Examine and replace, if needed, T-jet nozzles and valve stem assemblies. Water pumps are a vulnerable part on any carpet cleaning system. Seals and bearings can fail at any time without warning. We recommend a spare water pump so that minimal downtime will occur in the event of such a failure. Replace quick disconnect fittings on the clean water supply tanks. Perma mount procedures. You have just seen pictures of the Permamount 70 and 120, which do not have the portability of the Bain Clean base unit. The Aqua Mount. We need to back flush the vacuum blower on the Aqua Mount just as we back flush the vacuum blower on the base unit. We disconnect a short piece of 2 inch wire flex hose from the exhaust side of the vacuum blower and insert our long back flush hose into that PVC fitting. We are going to conduct the same procedure on this vacuum blower that we did on the base unit in terms of running clean water very slowly through the machine as it is turned on. The inlet for the garden hose in this setup is accessed through an opening that we provide once we have taken out the vacuum relief valve. It just threads into a white PVC fitting. We will turn the aqua mount on, run the water at again a very very slow speed down through that opening. The vacuum blower is turning and it is exhausting this water through its impeller system and out through the back flush hose. We will do this for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we shut the water off. We allow the vacuum blower to run another 10 minutes to dry itself out. Then we will once again put in just a couple of ounces of the Bain Clean vacuum loop and allow the blower to run another five minutes. Just a very small amount. Too much can actually cause problems. So less is better. The vacuum lube is a lubricant and rust inhibitor for the inside impellers of the vacuum blower. Once we have accomplished that, we put the vacuum relief valve back in the opening and just put it in hand tight, do not over tighten. We then will disconnect the back flush hose from the PVC fitting on the exhaust side of the vacuum blower and reinsert the small hose leading up to our silencer. Permamount weekly maintenance. We are now at the Permamount water pumping system. It will have a strainer leading into the water pump we will need to check and clean that strainer weekly. On the bottom side there is a large hex cap with an adjustable crescent wrench. Loosen that cap and pull out the little stainless steel cylindrical strainer. If there are any, um, if there is any debris or 
contamination in that strainer just clean it out reinsert the cap there will be a small gasket reaffix that put it hand tight and then just nudge it with a wrench do not over tighten you will have two lines going into the system one is a feed line the other is a return line we will have an inline filter positioned right before our inline water heater it is a small cylindrical strainer with slots looks like a thimble a knitting thimble we need to check and clean it on a weekly basis and it is located right inside the elbow leading in to our inline heater Terry now is just tightening down the compression fitting that holds that filter in place there is no lubrication or caulking or Teflon tape anything like that necessary this is a compression fitting just hand tight nudge it with a wrench